Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Steve Black. Yeah. You can get some ideas, some insights on how you can triple your income without working three times as hard. Who'd like to make more money than they're making? Say yes. yes. Yeah. Come on, if you believe it's possible to do better, say it's possible. It's possible. Let's say the magic word, say I am responsible. I am responsible. responsible. All right. I know y'all want to make as much money in this little time. So everybody at the top of the sheet where it says one, two, three, where it says three ways to increase your revenue, put down number one, get in front of more qualified prospects. Number one, get in front of more qualified prospects, whether that's buyers or sellers. They're motivated, they can list at the right price. Your, your question is how are you gonna get in front of them? Okay. And any top producing agent knows they're not in the real estate business, they're in the marketing themselves business. But your job as an agent is to get really good at marketing you. You don't have to be perfect, but you gotta be good. There were two agents went down to Africa on a safari, one of those glamp glamping trips. They strayed away from camp, they came up on this big lion. The one agent looks at the other one and goes, what are we gonna do? She goes, I'm running. She goes, you can't outrun that line. She goes, I don't have to. I just got to outrun you. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. So you got to get for more prospects. Number two, put down number two, make each relationship as valuable as possible. Now on a transactional level, that might mean that you get 6% listings instead of five. Or you sell four, three or four properties over the next 20 years instead of being one and done. But there's also people out there that can help us build our practice that will never buy a house from us. It's called networking. In my new book called Netlinking, How to Build a Powerful Business and Personal Network, I share strategies on how to take that person who maybe you've only met one time and turn them into a lifelong referral partner. We'll talk about that. Three, number three, put down improve your closing percentage. But you gotta be good at getting the yes. There's that point in, in the moment where people say to you, hey, you're really nice, can you call me on Tuesday? And then you drive by on Monday and see the enemy sign in their yard. <laughs> Somebody's a closer and it wasn't you. So I'm gonna teach you a few ver a little verbiage, some words today. If you get good at these three things, what's gonna happen in production? Is it gonna go up or down? Uh, a little bit or a lot of bit? I've seen agents that were struggling making 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars, and a year later they're making 200 thousand dollars simply by adjusting a couple things. Hopefully you'll discover what those things are today. Number one on the worksheet where it says 10 things you must master, put down number one, get in front of more, uh, put down number one, goal setting and planning. You gotta get that plan together. Whether your goal is to make 100,000 or it's to make 300,000, the question is how are you gonna do it? The Seahawks always have a game plan. They have their first, you know, uh, Pete Carroll has the first 25, to to 40 plays scripted out. Now if they fall behind in the game, they might adjust that, they might go to you know go to Jimmy Graham up in the air versus handing it to Lynch, but they have something to guide them. I mean, when they built this building, they had a blueprint. You've got to get a blueprint together for the next five years of your life, not only in business, but life. So go to the second white page I handed out, if you would, please. And it, you'll see there it says 12 months. I want everybody to write down a goal. But before you write the goal down, ask yourself if your social media was automated so you were consistent with it, if you were uh, doing at least 10 to 15 deals a year simply from your digital marketing efforts, when you were in front of people, if you're getting listings at the right price, if you're really good at getting buyers' commitments so they write out road offers without a ton of contingencies, how much money could you make in the next year? What are the top agents? from here to Marysville, make every year and add 20% to it. So put down a goal, what would you be satisfied with? What's your goal for the next 12 months gross commission? For your three month goal though, don't write down money. I want you to write down how many listings are you gonna get in the next 90 days? Two a month would be six, three a month would be nine, four a month would be 12. So set two goals, 12 month income goal, 90 day uh, production goal. You might also put a 90 day production goal, how much you're gonna put under contract in the next 90 days for those of you that have buyers in the funnel. So put down a goal, how much you're gonna put under contract. The more clear you are about your goals, the more motivated you are. Has anybody here ever been to the health club or the gym? When you go to the gym, if, you're, if you don't have certainty, when you get on that life cycle or that Stairmaster, 
You'll quit when you're tired. How long does it take to get tired on one of those machines? You're good for 30 seconds, I'm good for two minutes. But I but I always break it down mentally. I, I put in 18 minutes, I get to six. I said I'm tired, but I can go to nine. You know how it goes, you chunk it down. Now you're at nine and you're a little bored. A lot of the activities in real estate that the top producers do aren't always fun. You know, picking up the phone, spent, I had a lunch with the top producer, did 13 million in Bellevue the other day. I said, what's your secret? She says, I spend an hour and a half on the telephone every day calling prospects whether I like, feel like it or not. I said, do you have an assistant? She makes the calls? I, she goes, no. She meets the locksmith, she deals with the inspector. I'm the rainmaker. I make 10 to 25 phone calls, have conversations. Most agents aren't making 25 calls a month. I do it every day. 13 million. Yeah. You know, you, you, know, you have 33 touches. Keller, uh, uh, Gary Keller teaches and the company teaches. Spot on. But part of that is picking up that telephone. And I'll give you a script in a few minutes for those of you that haven't been as active as you should. But goal setting. So you put down a 90-day goal, you put down a 12-month goal. Who set a goal to do better than they're doing? Can I see a raise of hands? Awesome. Who wants to do about the same? Who wants to do worse? Who's not going to answer any of my questions? All right? <laughs> Who wants to do better? Say yes. 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 All right. Here's what I know. You're going to have to be willing to do some things different. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, what are you going to get? And if you do the same things, it's insanity, they say. Expecting different. So put your hands together like this. Let me show you something. How difficult it is to change. Who put the left thumb over the right thumb? Can I see a raise of hands? Who put the left thumb over the right thumb? All right, our research shows you all are more intelligent than the average person. <laughs> Who put the right over left? Can I see a raise of hands? What's your name? Tom. Tom and the rest of your research shows higher sex drive than the average person. <laughs> Tom says, I knew that, right? <laughs> Everybody put your hands back together. And switch your thumbs around. How's that feel? Weird. 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 Strange. Awkward. Feel sexier? <laughs> Anytime you try to do something different. I know I've got some people in the room, and they built their business off of face-to-face -face and referrals, which is exactly what you should have done. But let me paint a picture for you. You've been slow to embrace digital marketing and social media. And your friend who you've known for 15, 20 years, refers her 30-year-old son to you, he's an attorney, and he says, Mom, I'll give, I'll, give, I'll, give, uh, I'll give your friend a call. But he goes to the law firm. He says, oh, you're in the market for a property? My sister-in-law's in real estate. Here's her card. Our 30-year-old friend Googles both of you, and the other person's online image is really smoking. There's... YouTube channel, there's video testimonials, there's free reports to download. And we go over to our other friend and it doesn't look so good. Who does the 30-year-old gravitate towards? The one who has that smoking online image. So even if you're not gonna play with it all the time, you gotta understand that that's where people are starting. Where do 98% of home searches start? Online. online. And a lot of times people have made their decision about you even before they meet you, true or true. I can't tell you, I walked in today and I, you know, a couple of the folks that had set this up, they never met me, but they felt like they had, Cindy comes running up to me, I've seen your videos, I really like what people say, I've heard nothing but good things, and it was because she's met me before she's met me. Does that make sense? So we're going to talk about that. But to, to get to the other side, to do things that are awkward, that are different, to grow, you've got to have a reason. When you have a why in life, you achieve the what's. My friend Tony Robbins taught me this. You're motivated by pain and pleasure. You move away from discomfort towards comfort. Some agents, their business cycle is like this. They don't sell something until they need the money. They, 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 their car breaks down, and they find a way to go do a transaction. Anybody know anybody like that? And we all know the other agent, they're the super producer, and unless they got enough money in the bank to take their family on a luxury vacation to Hawaii in December, they're not satisfied. You're motivated by both. So 2A, 2B, put down two rewards you're going to do when you hit your goals. A year from now, you've, you've done the tough stuff, you've automated your social media, you're doing the things you should do, you're making spend an hour and a half a day on the telephone, you're reaching out to clients, you're ready everybody to meet a thank you note. 
You're promoting your open houses on Facebook and willing to invest, pay Facebook ten or twenty dollars to make sure thirty people show up instead of five. You're working smart. You've tripled your income. You're driving a new Lexus this time next year, or you're getting a new Mercedes. Or you say, Steve, I'm not materialistic. I like experiences. Maybe you want to go to New Zealand or Hawaii or Bora Bora and stay in one of those huts over the water. What will motivate you to G-O-Y-A? Get off of your anatomy. <laughs> and do this on a weekly basis. You know, when I'm not here, when you're not at the big rally, this is awesome. But you know what? You'll be motivated for about three days, and then you'll get back to what you were doing. Hopefully over that time, you make some changes. A shower doesn't last forever, but it's a good idea to take one once in a while. <laughs> but to stay motivated, you do this on Sunday night. You say, this week, this is what I'm going to achieve. And this is, I'm going to set myself two listing appointments. And I'm going to spend you know, 30 minutes a day on social media, not playing around, but talking and listening. I want to get it all done and go for a nice sushi dinner on the water. If I don't, I'm eating top ramen. Is discipline important in this business? Yes. Yes. It's everything for top producers. So many things are easy to do and easy not to do. My friend Zig Ziglar passed a couple of years ago, and he used to say, if you're hard on yourself, life will be easy on you. But if you're easy on yourself, life will be difficult. Some people in the room need to just be a little bit harder on themselves. Go to that front page where we wrote down goal setting. I'm going to go through the rest of this kind of quick. But who would agree? That it's important not only to have money goals, but have health goals, spiritual goals, family goals. Who would agree success is more than making money? Yes. Who also agrees, though, that money, money will help you suffer more comfortably in a better neighborhood? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm saying to say it's not everything that's right up there with oxygen and water. And I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a how-to trainer. Especially if you come to the big event. You get 64-page workbooks, scripts, verbiage, tool, exact tools. You should be using it. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. But number two, put down time management. You must make a commitment to be great at time management. Time management is life management. That means you're organized. That means you leverage your automation tools. Who has a smartphone? Can I see a reason? Whose smartphone is smarter than they are? Can I see a reason? <laughs> so... Uh, you got to stay organized. Some of you have too many apps installed. Some of you don't have the right apps installed. Here's an app everybody should install. Jot down, just under number two, time management, jot down Evernote, E-V-E-R-N-O-T-E. -E. I have a lot of clients, that are, uh, real estate agents, support people going paperless because of Evernote. Anybody use an Evernote? Evernote's going to connect your... Devices. A lot of you have too many devices. You've got a laptop, you've got an iPad, you've got a cell phone, you've got an office computer. None of them are talking to each other. You can't remember where the document was. So you get in the habit of using Evernote. Mileage, a huge thing for everybody. How are you documenting it? You set up a notebook in Evernote. Every time you get in the car, you snap a picture of the odometer. It marks that you were at Everett Country Club. IRS audits you, you're good to go. You're at a lunch and you get a receipt for a $30 lunch, $18 in parking. Well, most people put the receipt in an envelope, somebody cleans your car, it gets thrown out and you forget about it. Scan it in, it goes to your account, it's in a folder that's shared with your, uh, uh, that's shared with your account and your quarterlies are up to date and all your deductions are taken advantage of. A lot less stress in February and March, let me tell you. Business cards. A lot of you are good at networking. You're at the country club, you're at a chamber, you get five business cards. What do you do with the cards? Most people have the rubber band system. They get five cards, they put a rubber band, they think they're doing something. <laughs> what should you do? You scan them in with Evernote, it goes out to LinkedIn, it grabs their picture, it grabs other information, says you want to connect with this person, press the button, task one done, add them to your phone, three hundred to $500,000 buyer, 500000 to $750,000, throw the card away. Referral partner. LinkedIn. People say, what's the difference between LinkedIn and Facebook? Facebook, more of a family barbecue, street party. LinkedIn, more of a chamber of commerce meeting. I love LinkedIn, though, for agents. You know why I love it? That's where you find your real strong referral partners. Jot down number three, prospecting and following up. Prospecting, following up. And jot down referrals. Referrals come from two sources of, of people. First source, your past customers. That's why you keep, you keep in touch with them 33 times a year. You want to be top of mind. Part of that's your social media. What are you posting? 
right? The other people that give you referrals are uh, uh, other business professionals that know homeowners. Who are the people in Everett, in Marysville, in Linwood that know homeowners? Insurance agents, great. So if you have relationships established with at least five to 10 insurance agents, they each have you know, 250 to 500 people in their book of business. They're marketing, they can say, hey, I don't know if anybody wants to know what their house is worth, but call my friend at Keller Williams. Who else can you, who else would be a good person to network with? Hairstylists, they know folks. We get into servers at restaurants, dry cleaners. I used to get a lot of referrals when I was selling real estate from my accountant sources. I had five or six accounts. They would each send me three to five deals a year. That accounted for 15 to 20 transactions alone. And they would call me up and they'd say, my accountant's Bob. I need to buy or I need to sell. He says, you're the guy that could help me. No going up against four agents. My credibility was pre-established. So if you wanted to meet five great accountants and develop those referral sources, you go on LinkedIn, you type in, CPA within a 10 mile radius of where do you live, it kicks out 147 of them. You send them the scripted message I give you. You send them the second scripted message, next thing you know you're having coffee, and they're your new referral partner. Does that make sense, a little bit? Also divorce attorneys, I love divorce attorneys. Three deals there, husband, wife, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Boyfriend, yeah, I know. All right, all right, so give yourself a score of one to 10, how you doing? At Prospecting, marketing, follow up, leveraging social media, and your social media. A lot of young people come into the business and they think they're going to get it all done with Facebook and LinkedIn. It's not going to happen. It's a combination effort. But with your social media, the question I'm asked is how much time should, as an agent should I spend with it? Plan on 15 to 20 minutes every day. Okay? A lot of you are reading the newspaper. We're going to shift that focus over to Facebook and LinkedIn. And we're going to use a tool, jot it down, called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. Anybody using Hootsuite to automate their social media? Two of you. Okay. I live in Florida. I came up for the U.S. Open. I went to Bandon Dunes down in Oregon. I spent two weeks there. Not great internet in Bandon, Oregon. So before I went, I made sure to load up my Hootsuite with content. So that while I was golfing, my customers didn't forget about me. I was posting three times a day on four different networks. Okay, I had an 83-year-old realtor in Houston have her 20-year-old grandson fill up the funnel for her. She did 13 transactions last year. They said, they, she comes up to me the last summer and goes, they call me the social media grandma now. <laughs> Anybody can do this, but you want to do it so that you're consistent, you're automated. That's 85%. And then you do the little tricks in between to really get results. Number four, let's talk about trust and credibility. And I'll teach you the five steps uh, uh, process to do that at the big event. But number four, trust and credibility. Like I said, you've got to have a great image online, offline. If you're on floor duty, if you're holding an open house, if you've got an ad call that you're fielding off of one of your signs, you gotta get that person to connect with you. Jot that next to trust and credibility, common ground. The most important thing in relations is do we have something in common? And jot down next to common ground, jot down F O R M. You can find common ground with anybody based on F, family, O, occupation, R, recreation, or M, their message. F, family. Hey. Great to meet you. How long you lived in Washington? Where are your kids at? Where'd you go to school? I don't need to train you. You do this one naturally. It goes downhill from here, though. You meet somebody at an event. They ask you what you do. You say, oh, I'm in real estate. Not really captivating. You've got to have your elevator speech down. But you don't want it to be one that confuses people, so you got to practice it. And you meet somebody at an event. I'm an internationally known author and speaker. I headline Success Summit. But I'm really curious. How long have you been in real estate? Why'd you choose that as a career? Why'd you go with Keller Williams? Where do you see the industry going over the next few years? I have questions I've memorized that are going to allow me to engage and be memorable. Does that make sense? If people like you, you're going to get more listings at the right price. All right, our questions. Recreation, golfer, boater, skier, and M, their message. They like the Mariners, the Seahawks, they care less. 
F-O-R-M. Now, Ninja Technique, 2015, quick survey. When you get a lead, whether it's somebody calling off your sign, it's given to you by the, uh, at the office, it's floor duty, open house, and you follow up, who's in the habit of looking people up on the social networks, Facebook and LinkedIn, before they make the phone call? Five of you. Okay, you really need what I'm doing right now for you, okay? <laughs> Here, get your cell phones out, get your smartphones out, I'm going to teach you a Facebook app. I even get ahas from 25 year olds, that's why I do this. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to open the Facebook app. You're going to go to the magnifying glass like you're looking for my name, but instead of looking for my name, you're going to type in my cell phone number. And if you don't have the app installed or open, write my cell phone number down so you can do this later. Let's put it in now, 407. 790-1141, Voila, you got the real Steve Black in front of you. Click on it, send me a friend request. That works only four out of five times. Your backup plan, which actually works better than the primary plan, is if you have their email address, type in their email address. Together you have about a 90% success rate. So where does this come into play? Somebody, the receptionist says, you got a call from John Smith, he's interested in your property at 123 Main. You call John back. He says, yeah, is that a four-bed and three-bath? You say it is. If you're interested in a four-bed and three-bath, I know five or six other great ones. I'd love to just email you over the information. What's the best email for you? Terrific. It'll be on its way. I'll give you a call in a few minutes. Make sure you got it. You send it over. You Google them. You, you check them out on Facebook, you look them up on LinkedIn, you, if, me, if you're looking me up, you'd see I was a golfer, I have a Yorkie, I travel. So when you call me back, you say, Steve, just want to make sure you got the list. I say, I did. You say, I don't know if you're a golfer, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a house on Mill Creek Country Club on the 14th pole. Those things never come available. Just want to make you aware of it. I'm like, really? I want to see that one. When can I get in? And they call four agents, and you hit my hot button. I'm a golfer. And they got it's a great little yard. I don't know if you have a dog or not, but this is awesome property. <laughs> <laughs> what else, what else do we look up when we look people up on the social networks? Who do they know that we know? If I look you up, we probably have two or three of the same friends. I come on my listing appointment, I say, yeah, I looked you up on Facebook. How do you know Barbie? So she's like, I went to high school with her. How do you know her? I sold three properties to her. Are we going to have a better conversation? Give yourself every edge you can to defeat the competition. Has anybody ever seen the Kentucky Derby on TV? Horse that wins makes a million dollars. Horse that runs second makes 300. Here's my question. Does the horse that wins the race have to run around the track three times as fast to make three times as much? How much does it have to win by? I know. No, a fraction. It might be that you're good at remembering names. You know, you're, you've been dealing with the wife, you meet the husband for the first time, you forget his name, you walk in the kitchen, he goes, I don't know, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Maybe she would talk to us. Who's ever been with somebody 20 seconds after you meet them, you forget their names? So here's how you remember somebody's name, quick and dirty. You repeat it four to six times. What's your name? Hey, nice to meet you, Diane, Diane, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Jump down next to trust and credibility. Jump down sense of humor. If you don't have one, get one is my message. How many jail runs 24-7? Memorize a joke a day for seven days, you got a personality, right? <laughs> Who's ever met the realtor that looks like they've been weaned on a dill pickle? <laughs> they brighten up the room by leaving. Every time you see them, they want to complain about what's happening to their transactions. Who's met that person? Don't point at them if they're in the room. So you want to stay, by the way, our research shows 80% of the people you complain to don't care. The other 20% probably glad it happened to you. So you don't get to <laughs> <laughs> All right, jump down number five, identify people's needs. It's all about asking great what? Questions. And number six, put down presentation skills. If you ask the right questions, now you know how to sell somebody. So I'm going to paint a picture for you. You're on a listing appointment. I didn't tell you about my real estate career, did I? <laughs> 
It started when I was 22. I was fired by the time I was 23. Anybody here ever get fired from a commission-only situation? <laughs> <laughs> so I met Quinn. Top producer's making 250. I'm making less than 20. She never talked to me. Now she goes, what happened? I go, I got fired. She goes, what are you going to do? I go, I'm quitting. Man. This is too much. I can't deal with ups and downs. I'm not made for sales. She goes, don't quit. Get some skills. She goes, I I'm going to this Tommy Hopkins seminar. You should go. I go, it's free. She goes, it's $500. I go, you're on your own. I can't afford it. She can't afford not to. She calls the rep up. We're set the situation for like 100 a month. I get to this event. I come back. He teaches me some questions. I get 13 listings in 30 days and make $63,000. I'm able to hire an assistant. I go from 52 at the office to number one within three years. I have to sell her by $50,000. They asked me how am I doing it at 26. I start doing seminars, and this opened up for me. But number four, I, I, I would go out there and I would say, hey, I appreciate you having me out. There's probably more agents running around ever at the NAR Homes Belt. They'd say, it seems that way. I don't have to get off the list. I sound different than them. <clears throat> they probably want to get a listing from you the night they come in. I just want to kind of get to know you. I consider myself to be more of a consultant. It means I'm going to ask you some questions, some are kind of personal about the way you do business and, uh, and your money, your relationships. But understand, anything we talk about is confidential. And the more transparent you are, the more time, better we might Better use our time. Does that sound reasonable? They say it sounds great. And then jot down these six little words next to number five. Jot down what's most important to you about choosing a real estate agent, working with an agent. And you know what happens when you ask that question? They tell you, well, I want to work with an agent that works with a big company. Don't jump on it like a dog on a bone and say Keller Williams is the biggest and the best. What you say is, other than a big company, what else is important? Well, what's the minute it's going to communicate? Because our agent in New York must have been in the witness protection program. We couldn't find her. <laughs> so other than somebody that's going to communicate, what else is important? Well, I want somebody that's going to get us at least 500000 for the property and do it without having any open houses. They are telling you the things that are important to them. So number six, presentation skills. Jot these, this transition phrase down. Jot down, if I'm understanding you correctly, if I'm understanding correctly, now you feed it back to them. What's important to you is that you're with an agent that's with a big company that's a proven marketing plan to get your house sold for at least 500 that communicates with you along the way. They say, pretty much, you see, I think I can help. You want to hear my ideas? A lot better than walking in and saying, you have a nice house, let me show you what I can do for you. I'm a $5 million producer. My office is the best. But that's what the other three agents did. And if you do what they do, you can get the same results. Now, when you present the words, I can't emphasize it enough how important it is to use the right words. Jot down next to presentation skills. Jot down emotion, value, and momentum. Emotion, you think the words you use make a difference? If you're working with a first-time buyer and you say, hey, all I need you to do is sign the contracts, you create an emotion in them, the emotion of fear. What's a better way to say sign the contracts? Let me get your autograph. Let me okay the paperwork. Authorize the agreement. Two words there, sign contract, throw them in the trash. Inspection issue. Appraisal comes in low. Don't call your client up and say, we have a problem with the inspection. We have a problem with the appraisal. You say, there's a challenge with the appraisal, and here's what we can do to still get the transaction closed on time. Here's another one of my pet peeves. I'm with my banker the other day. He says, Steve, can I be honest with you? <laughs> Who hates that one? <laughs> I, I looked at him. I said, what? You lie to me all the time or just some of the time? Your horns come out. Your tail gets long. How do I know? Here, jot this one down. Nobody's teaching this. I know some of you say, I've heard some of this before. You might have, but you might have forgotten it. You probably haven't heard this one. Jot that next to number six. May I be direct? with you. Next time you have a client beating you up for a 6% commission, next time you have a buyer trying to throw in contingencies in a multiple offer situation, look at him or her in the eye, say, John, can I be direct with you? He's going to say, sure. He's not going to say beat around the bush. He's going to say, I know you really want this property. We're only 10000 apart. You know the kind of environment we've been. We, we, we've heard the other agent tell us there's other offers coming in. What's stopping us from making a clean offer on this tonight?
what's stopping you from listing with me right now at 6%? And then they'll tell you, I don't want to list with you at 6% because my wife has two friends that will do it for 5%. You know what I do there? I say, John, can I be direct with you? If low commission is your only concern, I know agents that will do it for 4% if you want to take that risk. Jot down next to number six, presentation skills. Jot down lower commissions equals higher risk. Somebody says, I know agents will do it for five. You say, can I be direct? If low commissions are like concerned, there's agents that will do it for 4%. You're not bashing his wife's friend. You're not bashing another company. You're bashing the idea of being cheap up front and, and uh, making their property less marketable. And let me tell you something. If you can't negotiate for yourself, why would I hire you to negotiate for me? The best way to do commission is bring it up before they do. I say, Tom, you're probably wondering what my commission, my fee for service is. I don't usually recommend more than 6%, unless you're really motivated and want your property to stand out. I have a lot of clients that are open to doing a 7% listing. And you know what? Sometimes you get it. I just got a Facebook message from a young couple, uh, about 27, 28 years old. They said, we just closed our first two transactions at 7% instead of 5%. We're going to Hawaii with the money. We made an extra $6,000 off of those two transactions. They pay a lot better than five, let me tell you. But you'll never get it unless you what? Ask for it. Ask us up. Number seven, let's talk about asking for the business. It's a lost art. I can teach you how to get really good at it. There's five or six little uh, phrases you need to learn. I'll teach you those at the Success Summit. I'm going to give you one today. The one I'm going to give you today, jot down next to number seven, jot down the next step is. Those are the four most powerful words in closing. The next step is. Most agents, you know what they say? Four different words. What do you think? And if you're out there asking people, what do you think? Guess what you're hearing? I want to think about it. So next time you want to say, what do you think? I want you to say, you have any questions about Keller Williams, my 42 point plan to get your house sold for the most money? The uh, fact I'm going to have you in 17 different websites within 72 hours. They say, no, you did a great job explaining all that. You say, if you don't have any questions, what? The next step, the next step is we have caravan in the area on Wednesdays. Would it be better to get you on the calendar for this Wednesday or eight days out? If you're showing a property, it's the same thing. It's never you want to write an offer. It's I know you have a 70 inch big screen. Do you think that would look better on this wall or that wall? Do you need me to recommend a landscaper for you, or do you have somebody you use? And you move it forward. Jot down number eight, address their concerns. Number eight, address their concerns. You may have heard this called handling objections. What do you think is better at dealing with objections and handling concerns? In general, men or women? Well, men should be better. We get rejected a lot at an early age. Let's establish that. <laughs> But our research does show women are better at dealing with objections and addressing concerns than men in general. You know why? Do men and women communicate differently? Ladies, when you tell a man about something, our natural instinct is to want to fix it, answer it, solve it. What do you really want from us? For us to listen, to show we're listening, it's called to empathize. So jot down next to number eight. Put down, when you hear an objection, make sure you empathize. And you know the phrase, right? I understand. I appreciate you being up front. I'm glad you shared that with me. Here, you haven't heard this one. With a man, this is the most important thing. This worked the best. Jot down, I respect where you're at on that. I respect where you're coming from. Men have a subconscious need to be respected by their peers and by their families. So, especially if you're a woman, you look at me and say, John, I totally respect where you're coming from on that. Now, the second thing you do, this is where most agents blow it, they try to answer the objection. We don't do that till later on. At the seminar, I'll spend an hour, hour and a half, I'll give you some very specific scripts on how to deal with the five, six most common objections you hear. But we start by empathizing, you jot down, question it, even when you know the answer. So let's say we're working with a the buyer, they're back for the third showing. We say, well, hey, if you like it, the next step is, let's put something on paper, let's write an offer. They say, I love the property, Diane, but I feel it's just overpriced. Did anybody ever hear that objection? I love it, but it just costs too much. So you say, I appreciate you being up front with me. It is a lot of money. How much would you expect something like this to be? They say, well, I was on Zillow, and I saw a comp for 40000 less. 
Is this kind of how the conversation goes? Okay, jot down next to number eight. Jot, you may have heard this one before. Jot down feel, felt, found. Feel, felt, found. You say, hey, I understand exactly how you... I sold three properties in the last 12 months in this subdivision. Almost everybody initially felt the way you did after seeing that comp. But here's what they found. And you break out your iPad through Evernote, and you find those pictures of the kitchen that was removed. And you're on your way to dealing with that objection. One other thing that that works really well with, by the way, is 6 and 7% listings. Who has video testimonials from happy, satisfied customers? Okay. <laughs> get with this guy, get some get your best customers in front of them, make some great videos, shorter is better. But the next time you're with a customer or client, they say, you did a great job, I appreciate you jumping through the hoops, I know this wasn't the easiest transaction. I was amazed that in fact you brought me multiple offers, didn't think it would sell for that much. You say, can I get a quick video in front of the sold side? Hey, this is Steve Black, I live in ABC Subdivision, I want you to know I was doing business with John at Keller Williams. And I didn't want to pay a 6% commission, but boy, am I glad I did, because he brought me an offer, three offers that were anywhere from ten to 30000 above asking. He did an excellent job marketing the property. I will never even look at a discount broker. Somebody says, I know it's not good for five. You say, I understand. How do you feel? Other people felt the same way. Do you have a second to watch this video? <laughs> it works. I got 13 listings. It was a letter and a Polaroid. Same thing. I go out, I said to Tommy Hopkins, I broke, what do I do? He says, go call for sale by owners. I said, they're tough. He goes, memorize it. I knock at the first door, the guy was as mean as a rattlesnake. He says, are you a realtor? I said, actually, I am. He goes, I don't want to do business with a realtor. I said, obviously, you have a good reason for not wanting to do business with an agent, and I asked what it is. I don't want to pay a commission. I said, I understand how you feel. John down the street felt the same way, but he felt like I did him out more than he could get on his own. How'd you do it? I need 15 minutes to explain. You want to do it now or later? I come on in. <laughs> <laughs> sell it, sold 249, sell it at full price, got a picture of him, his meat is a rattlesnake in front of his side. <laughs> Next person I talked to, same thing. I said, obviously you have a good reason. I understand how you feel. Tom felt the same way. Here's what he found. Rinse Ross repeat, 63,000, 24 years of age. You can do it too. Let's wrap this up. Number nine, PMA, positive mental attitude. When you woke up this morning, did you say good morning, God, or good God, it's morning? <laughs> Here's two things you can do right now to have a better attitude. When you wake up, please do not turn on the news. 72% of Americans have that CNN going, got to know what's going on, go to a news website, read the newspaper. CNN stands for constant negative news. More negativity in 28 minutes than you have the first time we'll replay it. So you're really naked out. <laughs> the other mistake we make is reaching for the cell phone. As big of a tech guy as I am, I do not touch this my first hour in the day. Who's ever been guilty of this? You're going to go to the gym, you're going to walk the dog, you're going to go for a hike. Instead, you pick up your cell phone, you're putting out fires now from 6.30 to 9.30. You're still in bed, you haven't eaten, and you're dehydrated. <laughs> I have a hidden camera at your house. <laughs> no more. You wake up, I'm awake, I'm alive, I feel great. First thing, two big glasses of water. Jot it down next to PMA, two big glasses of water. Most of you are drinking, reaching for the coffee. You're, you think you're hungry, you're dehydrated. Now you can go outside, breathe in, breathe out. Google, uh, go on YouTube, deep breathing exercises. Now you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna just do some light calisthenics, you're gonna do some squats and push-ups. I'm in hotels 200 days a year, I'm good to go, okay? Now you're going to work out the mind. You're going to read 5, 10, 15 minutes, blog, article, book. Now you're going to write three, write, you're going to write three things down that you're grateful for. It doesn't have to be business. It's like your 13-year-old golden retriever is alive and has a tennis ball in her mouth. But when you're grateful for that, you're grateful for life. When you're grateful for life, you attract success. You have the energy. Can you feel it? Yep. All right, so number 10, self-development. Put down four, four, four. First four books. I want you to become students of sales and marketing. In real estate, you're a lot of things. You're part tour guide, you're part marriage counselor, you're part of uh, meeting committee, some of you are playing bed and breakfast. But at the core, you're a marketer. And you gotta make sales and marketing your hobby. I think you read at least four business books a year, or if you're like me, you like to read the latest stuff online, blogs, articles, 10 minutes a day. I was over in Seattle the other day, and this little gal walks in, she wasn't paying much attention, she's texting while I'm talking. 
I get to four books, she raises her hat, she goes, I read Fifty Shades of Grey, all three, does that count? <laughs> I got my revenge, I said, depends what you do. <laughs> <laughs> the second four, put down CDs and audios. I want you to make a commitment to turn your car into a university on wheels. Who's, who's already done that? Who listens to good stuff in their vehicle, whether it's Brian Graffiti, Joe Stump, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar? It's a great habit to have. I, don't, I have a beautiful vehicle, I don't even know if the car or radio works, because I'm always listening to good stuff. Today I started in Redmond, I drove down to, was it Uniqlo? Is that what they say? Yeah. <laughs> drove back up here, I've already driven, you know, I don't know, 120 miles or whatever. I didn't care because I was getting educated coming up by five. And the last four, I put down go to four seminars a year. Every three months, I want you to go even beyond what the company does and get to an outside event. Now, obviously I have the Success Summit coming up, want to have you there, want you to join the excitement and the fun. But I only come every two years, so you got to find seven other events to do. But you always meet people, come out of there fired up, and get good ideas. Best salesperson I ever met, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia, I had this big house, long driveway. No salesperson ever came down my driveway in four years, because of course, salespeople like to go where the low hanging fruit is, so they go the short driveway on the left, the short driveway on the right. One day I drive my car in, I see this little girl on a green bicycle, coming behind me, you know, real fast, I pull into my garage, before I get to the front door, I hear this outside. It sounds like Richard Sherman at my door, right? I open up the door, and there's that eight year little girl. We parade her to the side. Very best self was her name. Skinny, she was with the two tooth, teeth, long brown hair. I wanted to have some fun, so I said, are you lost? Can I help you? She goes, no, my mom says you're a speaker, and you want to help me win my contest. <laughs> I said, oh, you're selling cookies. I wanted to give her the objection. So I said, oh, I'm on a diet. I can't have cookies. If you were selling peanuts, light bulbs, magazines, I would help you just to help out, but I could not have cookies in the house. She looked at me with those big brown eyes, heard me out, and says, hey, I understand exactly where you're coming from. <laughs> she said, my uncle's on a diet too, but he said, this is more about my contest than the cookies. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> I go, you're good. She goes, number one, trip seven, three years in a row. She whips out her brochure. <laughs> she has 14 different cookies listed there. The magic number, by the way, is three. If you give people a list of houses, you highlight three. You highlight one at 550, one at 575, one at 599. You said it's 20. These are the best three values on the market, in my opinion. Which one do you put a star next to, by the way? 575. No. <laughs> you always want to have something above it to friend you say, they're all great. This one is particularly good, I think. Or when can we see it? She says to me, the three best cookies, in my opinion, are the Thin Mints, the Peanut Butter, and the Savannah Smiles. Have you ever had any of them? I go, I've had them all. <laughs> she goes, which one do you like the most? I go, I'm 290 pounds. I like them all. <laughs> now it's time to ask for the business. What should she say? How many? That's like asking the seller how much do you want to put the property on the market for? He says 600 and it's not worth more than five and a quarter. You're putting him in control. She said to me, why don't I put you down for two boxes of each? <laughs> she asked for the 7% commission. She didn't say one box. She said two. Then she shut up. Who's ever met a realtor? They talk them into the sale and they talk them what? Um, so I'm looking at her, she's looking at me, and I said, okay, give me six. She goes, terrific, did you know we also have low-fat cookies? <laughs> give me two. That little devil sells me eight boxes. How many did I want to buy when I woke up that morning? Zero. But I met a what? Exactly. Salesperson. She wasn't done. She looked at me and she says, if you were me, who would you go see next? I said, I really don't know many people. She goes, you got to know one or two people in the neighborhood. Who's lived here more than five years? I said, well, go see my friend Patrick. He's two streets up. She goes, can you text him for me? <laughs> <laughs> and if an eight-year-old girl is better than you, you need to do a checkup from the neck up. All right, jump down next to self-development. Jump down 3%. One other thing, 3%. You've got to invest at least 3% of what you want to make back in your mind. When I made a commitment to make $200,000, I set aside my first $6,000, and I said, this is for... Classes, seminars, books, coaching. 
putting on this event. Remember this. Your number one goal in life isn't to be rich. It's to be happy. But unless you're learning, you're not growing. Unless you're growing, you're not truly happy. And unless you're happy, what else is there? See you at the top. Enjoy being with you. Thank you.